With almost as many landing skids as torpedoes, the Aegis Retaliator, aka the Black Death, aka the kiss your butt goodbye, has been blowing up crap for the Navy for almost as long as there has been crap to blow up. If your great 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 grandfather had been bombed to death, there's a fair chance that this was the ship that would have done it. Designed for the long haul, the Tally's twin bays hold enough ordnance to level a city, while the bounty of man turrets means you'll have plenty of company when you stop to have a picnic on your way home. Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at the Aegis Retaliator, a bomber that has an exuberant amount of turrets that would put a World War I battleship to shame and is also equipped with some excellent firepower in terms of torpedoes, size 9 and 6 of them. So devastation is almost certainly not a problem for this ship. The Aegis Retaliator Bomber is a heavy bomber used by the UEE military for centuries, boasting a powerful and versatile rack of torpedoes and an impressive array of anti-fighter turrets. The Retaliator is capable of long-range tactical strikes against installations and capital-class vessels. It is a key portion of the UEE's power projection. Retaliator squadrons have served with distinction against outlaws, the Vandal and other enemies of the Empire. The base version of the Retaliator is customizable with additional modules. The vehicle has an option to swap out two central areas of the ship for various different modular rooms. These can fundamentally alter the function and role of the ship. The ship's guns are on five man turrets, three of them hold a pair of size two guns each, while the other two turrets can hold a pair of size three guns each. Since its introduction in the 26th century, Aegis Dynamics Retaliator has had a distinguished if conflicted history. Before they started designing the bomber, researchers performed extensive interviews with military pilots to understand what was lacking in contemporary bombers of the time. This pilot-centric approach drove the design decisions of what became the Retaliator, a heavy ordnance weapons platform capable of handling both fighters and ground targets. Although the Retaliator was almost synonymous with the reign of the Messers and began to see decreased usage as the military distanced itself from that era, the ship began a surprising resurgence in the private sector. The Retaliator was at the centre of many controversies during the later Messer years, when the Navy decided to use cluster missiles against a political activist group hiding in what is now Haven. Sparking debate throughout the UEE, after the Battle of Idris IV, Retaliators became common in recruitment messages for the First Tavaran War. We need a ship to stalk and damage heavy prey. That was the design brief written by Aaron Tracy during the initial engineering meeting of what would become the Retaliator. The military needed a ship that could deploy faster than a capital ship, could access a wider variety of jump points and could still deliver payloads of near equal size and devastation. While a formidable foe on its own, a fleet of Retaliators has time and again proved to be more than a match for the larger class vessels. One of Aegis' most ingenious designs, a removable ordnance bay, allows for the entire section to come out for repairs. This feature saw Aegis designing replacement modules to fit with the pre-existing mounts and allow the Retaliator to fulfil a brand new array of civilian applications, such as cargo hauling, prisoner transport and even expanded captain crew quarters. While its heavy strike capabilities are well documented, the ship's ability to withstand assault are less well known. The Retaliator features five-man turrets, giving an overlapping field of fire. This helps protect the ship from all directions of attack, and these turrets have allowed the Retaliator to push deeper beyond enemy lines with less fighter support. The Retaliator emerged as a versatile, heavy-hitting weapons platform. It delivers devastating attacks against capital ships and planet-side targets. Thanks to a revolutionary rotary launcher system, nicknamed the Roto by the early test crews, this launcher system allows its star men to load torpedoes of varying payloads and then let the bombardier rotate and fire the ordnance best suited for the situation. Despite distinguishing themselves in various operations such as the Battle of Idris IV, they are most commonly associated with the abuse of the Mesa regime. The current model of the Retaliator was built with modular bays which allows it to be converted from its original role to service as a cargo or dropship. Civilians are known to extensively customise surplus Retaliators for non-wartime roles. 
So there we go guys, that was a brief insight into the history of the mighty Aegis Retaliator. It has quite an interesting and checkered past, quite a lot of controversy surrounding the ship as it was used to strike essentially civilian targets with cluster munitions which till this day is still debated around the UEE so fairly interesting there's a lot of law attached to this particular vessel however I feel that would be an entirely separate video but for today we'll just focus on the design of the ship the firepower that it packs the potential uses and what we might expect from this wonderful sleek looking design of a spaceship from Aegis Dynamics so let's start by talking about some of the things that are really cool. The positives of this ship. It looks sleek. It looks poised. It's venomous. It's got room for you and your friends. It packs a punch and it is devastating to capital ships, frigates and things of that nature with the firepower that this ship is packing. The engines look incredible. It has VTOL. It has plenty of landing gear. But it has a very sort of if Batman had a bomber in space this would almost certainly be it alongside the Eclipse um, so it's a very cool aesthetically very pleasing ship to look at it's very sleek very potent and then of course we have its tremendous firepower with that unique rotary system for its torpedoes which are size 9 and we can carry six of those so the DPS on this ship is unparalleled in terms of sheer firepower it is ridiculous and many people use this ship to chew up hammerheads for their ERTs without a problem um, however there are some issues with this ship um, that I would like to discuss it is of my humble opinion that this ship should be top of the list for a rework or its gold standard pass there are far too many niggles that I have had presently in 317.5.318 so if you're watching this in the future that have irritated me for what is otherwise an excellent and proven ship its potential I don't think is in question but its current state is let's say frustrating to say the least apart from that if you can look aside from those minor niggles then this ship is awesome we have the VTOL we have that sleek wing design it has so many turrets for you and your friends so even if you were to swap out the modules where the torpedoes are located for something else like cargo running prisoner transport i think is an excellent idea um i can see some really cool role playing happen happening with that in the future uh, maybe you're carrying in a very high risk target in the prison bay of this ship and you'll need these turrets to fend off his would-be um releases his freedomers, the people that want to come and set this guy free, that's really high value target that's sat in the back of your retaliator. So potentially the ship has got a lot of fun to be had with it, especially with orgs of varying sizes, um, even with a small group of friends, you're going to have a good time in the retaliator. The problem is there are just far too many issues and niggles that I really feel break the immersion and full potential of this, quite honestly glorious looking powerful deadly ship and it's a shame and now I have no doubt that CIG will wave their magic fix brush all over this ship and then this will be something to be reckoned with um, it will be extremely versatile extremely powerful and a joy to fly but at the moment there are some issues with the ship that really do taint that retaliator experience so let's go over some of my issues with this ship. Then they're not huge and they're easily fixed. So the first one, there was a bug where you get into the cockpit and you get stuck behind the seat and you can't get out. That has since been fixed, but I have had it in the past. So it does, to be, uh, it does seem to be a recurring bug, which is kind of annoying. And it does really break the immersion when you can't get out of your own seat. Um, but I think my main niggle with this ship is not the design of it. It's more sort of the lighting. There are some areas of this ship which are nicely lit and easy to navigate. There are other areas of this ship where it's so dark, so dingy that you have to switch your flashlight torch on to see what you're doing. And I, that kind of irritates me a little bit because I want to see where I'm going. Also, with the way the ship's designed and its modularity, I would like to see it widened. Not by much, by like a meter. I feel the corridors and the hallways of this ship are very tight 
very tight in some areas of the ship, which are going to make it difficult for you and your crew to get in around an emergency, especially when we get the resource management and people are rushing around on board to try and fix things. It's going to be super tight. Um, so I do feel that this ship would benefit from being stretched out just a tiny bit, by a metre, if that, just to make these corridors a bit more easier to traverse and get in and around into places, especially for the engineers who are going to be running around like crazy trying to put out fires and replace components. As you can see, it's very, very tight. Now, these areas of the ship are fairly well lit, but here you can see there's like the um, joining corridor here that puts us down into two different alleys of the ship. And you can see it's so dark in here. Um, unnecessarily dark. I would like more lighting in some aspects and areas of the ship. I think it would suit it well. Um, the layout is very tight and windy and I would like to be able to see where I'm going because it is a little bit too dark for my taste. So those are some of the minor niggles. The other minor niggle I've been having is deploying the torpedoes. Sometimes the torpedo bay won't open, sometimes it won't shut. It's um, one of those things, just an annoying bug, which I'm sure will get fixed. I have no other issues with this ship apart from the lighting and the tight corridors. I think if those things get fixed, and of course the bugs will obviously get fixed with the gold pass, then we really have a special ship just a little bit wider. And I think this will be a much more immersive, enjoyable experience Sorry for everybody that owns a Retaliator or wishes to purchase one. Other than that, the ship is brilliant. It's pretty fast for a bomber. It handles respectably in atmosphere with the VTOL. And, you know, look at the size of these torpedoes. Who doesn't want that in their fleet? I can imagine a lot of organizations are going to have one, two, three, even four retaliators. And to stumble across those um, would be a pretty terrifying sight. So maybe um, run away would be my advice. However, there are some balancing tweaks I think are needed um, with ships in general. I think there's far too much chaff and noise and countermeasures on all of these ships. It kind of makes the torpedoes and bombs and various ordnance, even missiles, pretty redundant in my opinion. I think you should have a finite amount and you should use them wisely to give these ships a chance to get missiles, torpedoes on target. Just an opinion. Um, we'll find out what master modes and the future ship balancing brings to missiles and torpedoes but otherwise interior and gameplay wise those are my only complaints apart from that it does look very sci-fi in here it does look military it's sort of a very gun steel military vibe that you get from Aegis like you do in all airships so don't get me wrong, this is an excellent ship and to be honest I just can't wait to see what happens when it gets hit by the CIG love brush. Right, let's take a look at weapons and components. Okay, so let's take a look at the stock components you will find on the Retaliator Heavy Bomber. And as you can see, it has plenty of turrets, which are all equipped with Panthers. So a fair amount of DPS for you and your friends to fend off any would-be fighter attacker that might be trying to prevent you from dropping ordnance on your target of choice. Now, obviously, the key selling point of this ship is these ridiculous torpedoes. Now, the Argos are the stock ones. You can see they do a lot less damage than the Seekers. But they're still more than capable of putting out a ridiculous amount of DPS and you can still shred things with those but for the ultimate torpedo experience you almost certainly want to purchase and equip the Seekers because the damage output is quite frankly ridiculous. So we will have six of those, thank you very much sir. Then we have two shields which are size two and they are the full stops. Um, I haven't been close enough to get shot at um, to see how these perform really. To be fair though, I would probably swap these for the FR-76s and see how we got on. Maybe one FR-76 and maybe an industrial of some sort, maybe a rampart um, to mix and match things up a little bit. Of course, it will be tailored to your choice. Your personal preference is always going to trump anything else. Then we have the power plants, which are, again, size 2. We do get two of those, and these are maelstroms. I would almost certainly, as it's a military ship, be throwing in two JS-400s, 
a lot of turrets that need power also for the coolers we get two of them which are size two and i would almost certainly swap those out for the snow packs and the qt drive i really like anyways to crossfield it is an excellent drive i actually stick this well used to in the constellations if it's still available crossfield is an excellent qt drive i won't be swapping this in the future unless i need extra extra distance to strike targets otherwise it's a great qt drive so let's now briefly touch on the specifications it has a length of 69.5 meters a width of 42.5 a height of 12.5 its combat speed is 138 meters per second and has a top speed of 942 it crews four to seven and its role is of course a heavy bomb you can also buy this for 4 million Alpha UEC in game. Okay, so as we make our way around this ship for a good sense of scale, you're immediately greeted by numerous turrets, an elevator that leads into the main ship itself, and then of course we have numerous landing gear. We have the engines in the VTOL configuration, which they look epic. I really enjoy the aesthetics of the engines, and watching the animation is also pretty pleasant. As we move towards the rear, we get this really intricate sort of tail design. Um, reminds me of the back of an old school Cadillac, the way it's shaped in some respects, but I like it. The wings also tuck in and out, which can be manipulated, which is awesome. Um, these will unfold and obviously give us a bit more aerodynamic um, characteristics, make it a little bit easier to fly in atmosphere. And that is important for getting bombs on target. And here you can see well, what I mean when I'm referring to it does look like an old school Cadillac because those look like the old tail lights from one and then we have the two main thrusters tucked in neatly either side of the tail section of the spacecraft so it does look really impressive I really like this ship I just want it to be better it can be better and I know for a fact that the gold pass and maybe a rework will make this ship even better than it already is because the potential for it is superb a lot of people will have fun in this ship it looks the part it has the firepower it's just these minor niggles that break the immersion but other than that it is an excellent excellent ship um, so we'll make our way sort of into the ship via this elevator um, which i've already pre-opened for ease of access so here we go then into the mighty retaliator up the lift where we are greeted by like the join-in section of the ship you'll notice there's two air docks which is good and then immediately the rear torpedo bay is sort of split into two so this will be the modular section this whole central area of the ship will get ripped out and depending on what modules they provide for this ship you'll be able to replace those torpedo bays because they do take up a lot of room um, as you can see they are absolutely monstrous clear sky torpedoes here they look excellent now as you can see as we navigate this ship some of it is really nicely lit other areas not so much the cockpit which we'll check first has killed me numerous times that's why I'm not gonna sit in it just yet we'll save that towards the end we sort of do like a, a loop and you'll find the captain's quarters here, which I believe to be the pilot forward stroke captain area. The pilot is in fact the bombardier. He is responsible for putting those ordnance onto targets of value. Um, so not particularly comfortable. It's not designed to be. It is military. So we'll go back round and we have some of these doors have biometrics, um, which is really cool for the handprint or handprint authorization. Sorry. Then we'll go up to the top deck like so we're greeted by another turret entry point here i can just get in it's a slightly slower animation you'll notice compared to some of the other turrets in and around the verse it's a very steady turret operation i kind of like it slow because i'm less fearful that i'm going to get catapulted into space um, but these turrets will be designed all the same and they have some of the best views, I feel, for turrets in the game. The front forwarding firing position of the turret, um, that windshield, is very, very accommodating to the gunners, uh, gunners, sorry, gunners um, which is going to allow you to get rounds on target for any ship or fighter that's trying to stop you from dropping warheads on foreheads with the radar system, MFDs, everything easy to read 
and it seems that it operates using a pull push um, like pulley system to rotate the handle um, the turret uses these pull push handles which is really cool really like that and we have the various decrease increase sensitivity gyro fire methods and all that good stuff that we find in all the other turrets so we'll pop back down and make our way throughout the rest of the vessel here we have some gun racks I believe um, stowed right at the back and then we come to the dark dingy bunk areas so who look there's beds there believe it or not right at the back under uh, all of this stuff is very tight and again I have to, I think that might be a component bay there's some more beds there so we can log out obviously which is awesome but who is going to want to sleep in these tiny bunks right at the back? I mean, whoever is the most junior member of crew is obviously going to be sleeping in those horrific, dark, dingy, cold, horrible beds that underneath various components. So enjoy that, whoever you are, Mr. Junior Crewman. Um, so that'll take a while for you to get a better bunk, but still. Then we'll progress through background like the S shape of the ship. Well, it's actually more of a figure of eight, now that I think about it logically. And that brings us to deck A. Back to the two deck, um, two docking collars here, sorry. One up and one down. We have a component here. I don't like that being there, and I'll tell you why. Uh, if the ship gets boarded or we have any saboteurs on that component, and these, as you can see here, this needs redoing. That's ridiculous. They're just sat on a shelf. Um, so... I have no doubt that that will get fixed and improved so they don't look like they've just been placed books on a shelf. Uh, we have the torpedoes again. But can you see, as I'm navigating this ship, how tight it is? Um, just by one meter, I think, would do this ship the world of good. It's fairly dark, the lights aren't bright enough. Um, as we progress to some more turret stations. Um, and it is quite confusing at first, we have another component, um, quite confusing at first to actually navigate and get familiar with this ship. It's so tight and narrowing and a winding experience to get to the various turret stations. Um, it might just be because I'm stupid, which is more than likely the predominant reason, um, but I did struggle to navigate this ship for the first time. Um, again, another what looks like an oxygen tank maybe? I don't know, but we had to turn the torch on to have a look, and then it sneaks round. We have the other turret location sort of tucked away. But the general feel that you get from this ship is, yes, it's almost certainly military. No, there are no absolutely zero creature comforts to be found on board. You know, long distances, a ship that th that is this tight for the bomber variant is going to be quite a tedious journey for you and your crew you're going to have to find inventive ways to keep morale up i would not like to be out in the big black for long periods of time in a ship that's this dark this cramped this awful to navigate and we do have the toilet and i think there's some lockers there um they don't function and then a shower so at least there are some creature comforts in terms of hygiene but apart from that not a comfortable ship to be living on um, the toilet it's nice to have one we do have the sink as well and of course instead of a shorelet system we actually have a full shower so that might be worth its weight on gold in a ship that's very spare in its comfortability and i think those are lockers they are numbered one would assume so so yes very gun steel, very cold atmosphere you get in this ship. Very tight as we make our way back through deck A. Past these ginormous torpedoes again. Another figure of eight. And then, of course, we have the deck located just behind the cockpit. And we'll hop in the seat. And hopefully we don't get stuck now like I said that has been fixed but it, I think it is a reoccurring bug so just be careful that's all I can say to you cockpit wise very very awkward MFD positions very clumsy I think is the word I would use to describe this cockpit now obviously 
the radar is nice and large and we have the three MFDs above that. That is important. It needs to be large because you want to make sure, if you're in a fleet battle, that you are sending these monstrous torpedoes to their intended target. You don't accidentally want to start doing blue and blue scenarios. So I think that is a key factor in why that radar is bigger than most that you'll find in the ship, um, other ships. Um, it's a very important instrument for a ship that's delivering size 9 torpedoes. Um, but as you can see, it's fairly darked out in that cockpit as well. I think some lights would be a welcome touch. So there we go guys, that was my video on the Aegis Retaliator. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, you know what buttons to press. And I of course will have more Star Citizen content en route to your location very soon. Take care. Cheers.